What's going on, family? It's your man, K to the second letter. I am here on Southside Rabbi, of course, to my left. You're right. And let me say right, because that's the word that needs to be used when I describe the man I'm about to introduce. Oh my gosh. Right is what he does. He fights for your rights. Oh, my gosh. He fights for his rights. And he puts the E-O-U-S at the end of it. He's righteous. <laughs> In the mix, I'm talking about none other than our mean, the dream, the mean machine, he who cannot be deleted, defeated. When you're around him, you need to be seated and greet him with respect, honor, joy, and exuberance because the man's gravitas shakes the place. The man, the myth, the moment, the monument. I mean, Hudson, make some noise for my guy. Oh my God. Thank you. First of all, the person to my right, okay, the, the, the way that this man can speak, I'm going to use this word extemporaneously, Ooh. right? This, th- th- this, this man speaks in sermons. You're, you, 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 wow. you have pastors that preach them. He speaks them. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Now, listen, he's working on a book. I am. And I'm pretty sure that when that book is done, Brother Frederick Douglass is going to raise from the grave and no. say, what? kind of writing if in my lifetime that I, if I could even get got, gotten gotten just to touch the tip of his Air Jordan 6 wow and just get a little bit of the dust wow of what he has it would have been game. worth it you I didn't know lo- you didn't I lose. have lost again I'm talking about K to the second letter Amen. not a second better New York Times bestselling author already already book is not even book the name the, the title is not even out yet you know what I'm saying <laughs> You got to call that thing out, brother. Believe it. And you might receive it. Yes, I'm (laughs) talking. The pastor didn't put the might in there. No, no, right, right. I'm talking about K to the second letter, not a second better, a.k.a. Poppy Shampoo. Wow. Kevin Elijah Smooth and Groove Burgess. Make some noise for my boy one time. Thank you. I mean, it is absolutely an honor (laughs) to serve with you, brother. That's how you can win with humility. You know what I'm saying? Just give the somber kind of turn or whatever. So we are Southside Rabbi, and we have a special guest for the people tonight. Mm-hmm. And some people have reached out to us, okay? And by some people, um, I mean nobody. <laughs> have, for the most part, people have been pretty encouraging. But we have reached out to ourselves and said, where is the presence of the powerful, mighty woman of God on Southside Rabbi? Where are the sisters? Where are they? <laughs> we know they're in the, God has called them. Amen. We know they are here. We know the benefit, the effect, the necessity of their presence. Amen. So today, we are fulfilling what has been lacking, filling up what has been missing. Oh. Y'all about to get me preaching in here. Okay. All I need is an organ. By bringing a sister who is absolutely wonderful. Uh, this sister I've had the privilege to serve alongside at several different events, uh, and she is, uh, the word is formidable, right? Formidable. Formidable, I'm sorry. She is a formidable, I'm talking a presence. When she walks into the room, everyone knows that nothing will be the same. This young lady writes books by the dozens, okay? I asked her what she had going on. She was like, yeah, I'm finishing up my 50th book. For this week, and then I'm going to move on to my 60th book next week. So she's a, a Christian recording artist, author, speaker, evangelist, leader, and we are grateful to have her on the show. Do me a favor and make some noise for my sister, Maddie Ray. How are you? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've been holding this laughing the entire time. It is an honor, wow, to be here on the South Side Rabbi podcast. This yes. is amazing. So yes. thank you. I am... Wow, I, I just feel like the atmosphere is about to shift right now. Amen. I mean, this is this is incredible. It's going to keep so, shifting because it shifted when you walked in, sister. I, well, I receive it. <laughs> Amen. I hope you received it. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is amazing. Thank you. It is an honor to be on here. It's an honor to be a female representative on here just, Amen. you know, doing what I'm doing. So I'm grateful. Thank Amen. you. Amen. God that was my little sister. humble turn. Yeah. To, you know. that, was, that was perfect. That was, See, and that's how you outdo each other. That's how I outdo each other. Yeah, we're supposed to outdo each other in honor, you know, so. 
That's right. That there was mine. <laughs> there it is. There it is. See, I did both of us. Maddie, can you just start off by telling folks about um, just sort of who you are in a, in a more detailed way? Yeah. Um, kind of where you got your start and... Let's start a conversation there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, kind of the introduction of what I do. I'm a Christian recording artist. Uh, I travel as an evangelist, speaking and preaching. Um, now I create a lot of resources and write books. Like you said, I'm on my 50th one. Um, so, <laughs> no, I'm not but rich. You did write three books. <laughs> I wrote one book this year. <laughs> Which I'm so excited I'm for. I believe it's going to be a bestseller. So hey, I'm adding see? my agreement to Lord, that right now. Lord, so in the name are, of Lord. Jesus. Yes, we're, yes, we're calling it. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so just those different things. But where I got my start, I'm a pastor's kid. I've grown mm. up in the church my whole life. My parents founded our ministry, Church of Joy, over 25 years ago. Oh, wow, wow. It started uh, with my dad really having a heart for this young generation and him being called back to the city that he grew up in. Waukegan, Illinois, mm. um, to just reach a young generation there. So we did a lot of outreach, evangelism, programming, bus ministry, um, oh, no. what some people might know as Sidewalk Sunday School, where you kind of take a big yellow truck out into the streets, yeah. you cut the side of it out into a stage, it comes yeah. down, you have Sunday School there in wow, parks with it. young people that aren't able to come to church, or maybe their parents aren't doing that. And so I grew up around all of that. I grew up around my father just putting so much together for young people. We would do so many concerts. We were one of the spots where hip-hop artists knew if you need somewhere to go in the Midwest to perform uh, come to Church of Joy yeah. so we were one of those stops there I love it. and so I, love I grew it. up around that and watched that and loved it and so at a young age my dad being so innovative and creative um, when I was young about 12 years old he decided to launch a kids TV show that I would host called the Maddie Ray show really wow. and so we did that it was so fun yes so. amazing <laughs> yes. Wow. yeah so that's kind of how I started what was the show about so it was a kids show where I would teach them about the gospel we would show little clips because we would do wow. i was 12 i was 12 when i started so. i tried to tell wow. you <laughs> it was so it was Heavy so hitters. fun you see like, what i'm saying but this is, you know, this is what we bring to y'all yeah, this okay? is what we bring to y'all <laughs> take your shoes off okay. you're on the ground <laughs> I cannot, but it was it was amazing. We were just wanting to reach more kids, and we were doing big, like I said, outreaches. So we would take clips of that and kind of, you know, show kids, other kids, kind of having fun at church and encountering God. And so mm. that was a part of it. I would do little teachings on there. Um, I would be on green screen and interact with little characters mm. and do little songs and jingles and all of that fun stuff. And it was a really... Um, just time in my life where I, I I felt like I had so much purpose in the mm. church, you know. Mm. So so many kids can grow up in church, especially pastors' kids, and you you don't know what your place is. You don't know. You see your parents doing ministry, and you're kind of like, okay, am I a part of that? What do I do? But I'm so grateful that growing up, my father always made me a part. He always mm, included me, and he always gave me opportunity. And I saw it as I'm doing this with my parents. Like mm. I'm 12 years old. I'm like, yeah, we need to reach a generation. And yeah. so like, you know, I'm 23 years old now, and people always ask like, why do you say young people, young people? You're 23. And I'm like, I grew up like that, that that's, you know, what my parents would say. And I felt like I was doing it with them. And so I did that at 12. And then, like I said, my dad being so creative, he formed an all girls rap group. And really? so I was in that at about 13, 14 Shut now. Up, wow. <laughs> I, I know. That kind of I know, daddy, right? I need to get pops on uh, Southside yeah, Rapper, right? Absolutely. He's the one doing it all. Um, but I was a part of that. Four girls. I was the youngest. They were all in their 20s. So I was not the coolest at all. They were so much cooler than me. And uh, we would rap. We would dance. We would perform at different places. And that's when I fell in love with, like, performing and saw wow. that, like, as an option. Like, I could really present the gospel through doing this. And mm. so around 16, started writing my own songs, doing that, kind of got into that pop and hip hop space. Um, at 18, had the opportunity to potentially sign into the industry. Um, but during that season, um, there were some things going on in our ministry at that time, especially with our youth group and oh. our, our young people. Um, a lot of transition and our young people were just really struggling. So I was 18 at the time and... Um, I literally just was trying to be sensitive to the Lord as that was happening, and I felt God call me to stay a part of our church and to actually become the youth pastor there mm. and just do it more out of an act of honor to my father and just mm. bring his heart back into the youth ministry because sure. it just wasn't there. And sure. and I, I, I never wanted to be the person where, you know, God gave me all these things to reach young people, but I couldn't even reach the young people that right. he had first called us to sure, in our sure. ministry. And so... 
became the youth pastor at 18 years old yeah. while still doing music and all of that. Yeah. Um, but throughout the years, what's been beautiful is the church, our church, Church of Joy, has really backed and supported what I've done. And now, during this season, they've really sent me out wow. um, as an outreach of our ministry to yeah. travel preaching and speaking, to yeah. travel you know, performing and doing music, um, to now all of the books that I've done, we've self-published it. We've done it all in-house. Oh, wow, yeah. And so... The church is, it's amazing. And, and me and my dad have talked about this. We believe that that's what the church should do, that sure. there's so many, you know, young people that grow up in the church that need to be backed by the sure. church. Sure. I think sure. a lot of times they'll leave the church because they're looking, will someone support what I'm trying to do? I yeah. have these gifts and talents, but it's like, I believe the church should come behind some of these young <laughs> artists, these young people that want to lead and do this stuff and support them so it can be used for the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and for his glory. And yeah. so that's what our church has done. And that's probably a little bit more in length, no, um, just, you know, what our story has been, and it's included so many people beyond just myself, and yeah. I'm really, really grateful for that. So. That is powerful. Yeah. It's interesting. We, um, I mean, and I just did a plenary session at Flavor Fest here in Tampa, and uh, before we went on, we had this conversation in the back about deconversion, okay? So there's, mm. you know, people deconstructing their faith, mm -hmm. and people yes. are deconverting. For a lot yes. of people, in mm -hmm. fact... There's a great book called The Anatomy of Deconversion that has a study in it that's citing that for every every one person that believes in Jesus, mm -hmm. three people are leaving the church and not coming back. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, uh, and we're talking about that disparity in reference to a, a Christian leader who um, basically was the guy. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you didn't. There were certain spaces of Christian thinking mm -hmm. that you didn't talk about without including this guy's mm -hmm. name. Mm -hmm. um, this guy ends up passing away, and a bunch of stuff comes out about <clears throat> ways that he was abusing women mm -hmm. um, for years. Right. And uh, Pastor E. Mason uh, was back there, and he he said that he isn't as rarely thrown off his seat by hearing about these kind of scandals. Mm -hmm. Like he's mm -hmm. like you know. It's like what Jesus said, I, I know what's in men. I know, right. I know what's in people's hearts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said what was m even more shocking for him was that this particular leader had no church for years. Mm -hmm. For years, this mm -hmm. man was not submitted to leadership. For yep. years, this man wasn't in, 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 a, in a community. He wasn't. When I heard that, mm, yeah. my, 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 my heart sank yeah. because it made me think about the Christian music industry. Mm. Because on, for a lot of Christian artists, mm -hmm. their, yep. pa their church is their label. Mm -hmm. Their pastor is uh, whoever their, their lead creative guy is at the label. Mm -hmm. Their community is basically other artists who are also not in community. Right. Come on. So Come it, on. And, and I talked a little bit about how it, I call it the one, it's the one percent theory, where essentially you achieve some kind of notoriety in any industry, but particularly in the Christian music industry, mm -hmm. and you become unlike the kind of average Christian because now you're traveling all over the place, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. are people are are saying that they love you all the time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, and you kind of get into this sort of the, the one percent or less than one percent of Christians who have ever existed, <laughs> who are doing kind of leading with the light on them, right? right. And if you're not careful, you can continue to write books or preach and teach and rap and sing towards the 99%. Right. But you don't hang around with the 99%. Right. You only hang with the 1%. Mm -hmm. Right. You're very much insulated. And I've never seen that work well. Never. Never. Right. And you're so susceptible to so much because when you come from under a church covering, <laughs> what is it? It's a covering. Yeah. And so when you're no longer covered by your pastor or by your church, wow. you are now left open to deception. Wow. You're now left open to things that are not true, which is wow. deception. Wow. Wow. You are left open to the enemy to come in. You're left open to rebellion. You're wow. left open to give in to all of these different things sure. that are out there, you know, that if you were submitted to a covering, sure. you wouldn't. So that, I think that's why so many people today are giving heed to so many other doctrines, to so many other beliefs, and to the deception that's out there because they're not submitted. And it's so important for Christian artists today to submit. And, and even that word submission, even if you don't agree 
say that maybe you have to take off from one of these things that you're doing just to get into church or you have to pull back sure. in some area to do this. That's what submission is. Sure. Submission is where you decide to come under even if I don't agree. Yes, That's yes. the difference between submission and obedience. If you're obedient, well, then I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and that. But submission is, I don't feel like doing this. I wow. might not want to do this right now. It might be a little inconvenient at the moment, uh. but I have to do this because I'm under a covering. I'm under the authority of my church and my pastor. And that's what produces fruit in wow. their lives. That's what produces, you know, godliness within our lives. That's where the accountability is. That's where the character and integrity can continue to be developed. So I'm 100% in that. I am yeah. an advocate for the church and for especially Christian artists to stay submitted because, Absolutely. I mean, as, as an example myself, being in the church, my church has done more for me than anything I could have ever done wow, on my own. Wow, wow, and I'm grateful for that. Yes, that's a good point. Even yeah. just the practicality of being in a community. Yeah. Right. There's just some... Yeah, I, I, I'm around other believers that are praying for me, rooting for me. Yes. And if they believe in what we're doing, they will resource what I'm Absolutely. going yeah. after as well. So that's, yep. that's, that's, that's really... I, th I think it's like you said, too, when you start hanging around the 1%, it's easy, especially if you are being driven, essentially, you're delivering to the 99, then the 99 is essentially supporting you. Right. It's very much so easy to believe that you're still in with the 99, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I see them, they drive what I do. Yeah. But that's hanging with the 1% and not being amongst the 99 is not being in community. And that's we know right. that right, right, right. the Bible makes it very clear that part of our perseverance, the way that that happens is by us being in community. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. Yeah. It's the, our spiritual health is yeah, yeah, yeah. us so being important. built up by one another, right? right. Um, and it's just... Like you said, it doesn't work. It doesn't work if you are going to insulate yourself. Facts, facts. Yeah. Right? Like you said, the, the Lord's army doesn't enlist privates. That's it. And so mm. that's but that's but that's kind of mm. what can happen in the <laughs> artist space. Yeah. Is that it's easy. I think that especially when you have any kind of popularity, it's very easy to insulate yourself. Facts. And yeah. and not feel insulated because of the praises of everyone else facts, when it works. Facts. It's yeah. difficult to know that you the have to ship, be intentional. The ship is sinking. Yeah. When everybody is on mm. the boat partying. Right, like, right, well, right, right. Look how good we're doing. <laughs> exactly. The whole totally. Thing about to hit a glacier. <laughs> so let me ask you this. <laughs> As a female in this male-dominated space, yeah. what, what sort of things are you thinking through intentionally to be that kind of voice to sisters, to everyone in general? Right. But I'm sure that there's probably some, you know, there's some relatability there with your un uniqueness of your particular story and struggle. Mm -hmm. So how does that inform the music you make, how you write, being a sister, thinking about the male dominance of <laughs> a lot of areas, especially in the, the, the Christian kind of world? How do you kind of think through that? Yeah, well, I think it's, it's definitely, I mean, I can, I can answer it in two ways. I think one, just being in that space, you have to be so much more mindful because being in a woman, you know, whether it's in the Christian music, you know, space or even just in the the preaching church space of going in as a female preacher, you sure. know, I mean, there's a lot that can come with that, too. Yeah, and yeah. so I have to be very, very mindful. And again, I always bring up my father. He he helps me a lot with that of when I go into churches or into venues or into different things of just being mindful of how I have to carry myself, of how I have to be in that. And so I think for me, something that I love, even just helping other young girls and, and what I want to be an mm. example of is through sharing that message of even just my testimony of purity and things like that. It's really altered at times the course of girls' lives, just seeing that and seeing the possibility. Sure. I'll even just share this quickly of how, you know, I grew up a certain way of how my life was and in some ways how protected my life was, in some ways how consecrated kind of my life was and just I'd always argue with God at, at times of why can't I cross certain lines? I was never able to cross certain lines growing up. Oh. I just it just never happened. And I'm like, God, why why did I always why was I always just not able to to get into certain things, which I'm grateful for today. But I always felt the Lord share with me that the reason in some ways he had preserved me and helped me in areas was to show young girls in a generation that it's possible to live a certain way. It's possible to resist certain temptations wow. that, that were very hard, but yeah. it's possible. It's hard to not give in to certain things that were very hard for me to not give into, but it was possible. Wow. And so it's things like that that I love sharing is just knowing that if there's another option, that mm. not all of us have to go out and experience this or live life like that. Or like people would say, well, you need to go out here and live a little, or you need to have a little experience. And it's like, 
You don't. You oh. don't have to. Oh. You can completely consecrate yourself to the Lord. Not that you don't have challenges. Not that you don't struggle. Not that you're perfect by any means. But it's a possible to live the life that God intended and created for you to live. And so that's really my heart. And I'm grateful for the story I have and and and, and how God positioned me in that. And I and I try to share that in humility to to help girls as they grow up to live their life that way as well. That is amazing. Amen. Yeah. Dating. Yeah. <laughs> do you get asked to talk about that a lot? How do you think about that? You you are a single yeah. s- single sister. So single sister. Uh-huh. <laughs> Typically I see you with, with, with your mom. Single sister. <laughs> and you always travel with, with the community of, of, of folks with you. Do you get asked to talk about that a lot? Do people, do dudes try you? Let, let's, let's, let's get crazy. <laughs> okay, let's take it there. I mean, wh- how do you think? So, I, so I, I guess I'm asking you five questions at once. So the first question is: I got you. I'm tracking with you. <laughs> uh, people ask you to talk about dating because that seems to be if you if you you, you do a series on dating, church is just filled, man. People are trying to figure mm. out how to. Mm-hmm. Maybe I need to do a series work. on dating then. <laughs> <laughs> probably should. Okay. Yeah. Also, I rabbi uh-huh. dating. Um, but anyways, do you? How do you think about that? I know a lot of the emphasis in in, in churches is is trying to get people to get married as soon as possible and almost think something's wrong with you if you haven't gotten married yet, Message. Uh, which is backfired horribly. A lot, yeah. Um, but um, as you travel, you know, with your community, I'm sure folks want to know what your thoughts are on that. Do you get asked to talk about that? And how do you think about it? You know, I have not been asked that more than I have this year. I don't know mm. if it's just because of my age now that everybody wants to talk about it. <laughs> but I am like, y'all really are in my business now. I'm like, this is, it was just never talked about. So it's being asked a lot more now, but I, I'm so glad because I, I love talking about it. And I never dated in high school, never dated even up until now. I've never dated before. Um, my parents raised me um, where I wasn't allowed to date, but I think God gave me a grace in that season to not push back or rebel oh. or fight back. Um, I was an odd child. I would, I, my parent, my kid, my uh, friends would ask me, be like, well, why can't you date? My parents would allow me, but you know, I, I agree with them. Yes. I agree. <laughs> odd child. <laughs> why would you say uh, yes. that? <laughs> I agree with my parents. Um, but I never did. And, and my parents helped me to, again, which is, you'll hear me talk about my parents, my father. They played a huge role in my Lord, life the whole time. Lord, grace is, with my kids. In name, <laughs> yes, in the name of Jesus. But <laughs> they helped me to even understand that dating is for marriage. Mm. And I've been sharing this. I literally shared this today with someone else today, that dating is for marriage. And when you date without the intention for marriage, either three things will happen. You will either, number one, just play around and get your heart broken. Oh. Number two, you'll compromise and you'll fall into sin. Number three, you'll expedite everything. And now you're going to get married because either you have fallen or because we just can't wait anymore. We need to get married. But it might not have been the season for that. Oh. And so I was not in high school in a season for marriage. Oh. I am not currently in a season for marriage. With I'm very focused on what God has me doing. And I understand, like we just said about a woman in this space, for a woman, it's very different when you get married versus when a man gets married, you become a wife and a mother. Mm. And I understand that. And, mm. and I'm excited for when that day comes. But I know that... That's that's a season in and of itself that I want to give my time to. And I know that this season, God has me doing what he's called me to do right now. Yeah. And so I have had to really, like I've said, consecrate myself to the Lord and just say, wow. I'm not going to pursue that right now. Yeah. Um, and so, and I, like I said, I, I love talking about that because it's like, again, it's possible. Yes. It's possible. Yes. It's possible to not. And yes. so... You know, when I travel, um, people ask me that a lot more now. I mean, they see that I'm a single sister. And so they (laughs) ask me about that a lot more. Thankfully, because I have a great team that comes with me, um, I don't have a lot of guys that push in, Mm -hmm. um, which I'm I'm grateful for. I hope Mr. Wright does, though, when he comes. I'm going to need him to be very clear. So, like, don't don't (laughs) expect me to, you know, come from around my merch table and be like, hi, I think that's not going to happen, buddy. I'm going to need you to be a come come along. But, But, yeah, that's kind of been my story with it. And... I'm grateful for the season that God has me in, but that that's what I believe about dating. So even with our youth group, we encourage our young people to not date mm. at a young age and, and to wait for when you're ready for marriage so that way you can first find who you are, find what God has called you to do, and then be ready for that season of marriage when you're ready to date so that way it can work out the way that God intends for it to wow. work out. Wow. I tell you what, Maddie, like this, this whole idea of showing an onlooking world the possibility of something other 
than what is supposed to just be in the air. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like mm-hmm. this is just the natural thing that right. we do. It's just normal in in yeah. both in both secular and Christian. I mean, sure. dating is normal in 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 you know, in the Christian space, in church. I mean, it's totally normal and nothing's wrong with it. But it's like looking at some of these things of what are what are the benefits and what are some of the, what are the pros and the cons yeah, of it? And, and just, you know, is it better sometimes to just wait? Yeah. Is, it, is there more fruit in that? I, I've i seen fruit in that, sure. but everyone's story is different. So. Mm-hmm. One time Paul said that singleness is better than marriage. So I can devote myself to the work of the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. And and I don't want to rag on marriage because I am a proud sponsor of marriage and proud sponsor <laughs> of young marriage. Uh, and I'm also, I also don't have a host, I don't have a kind of, I'm not overly sensitive about Christians meeting each other and getting to know each other and stuff like that. I think that's, that, that serves a place mm-hmm. that serves a role, especially if it's done in community mm-hmm. in the process of seeing if you know, the Lord would have you marry someone. However, you are rarely going to find anybody repeat what Paul said very boldly, that there's something Mm -hmm. in the kingdom context better. You know what I'm saying? No, we will get to as good. You know what I'm saying? You know, singleness, marriage, I mean, at least in Paul's mind, (laughs) that there was an advantage to singleness, that it was not seen as a uh, A handicap. Yeah, or a curse. Right. The gift that you're trying to return. Right. Uh, (laughs) But man, what I have found in with, with individuals that take the the Bible serious, take what 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 even what the Bible says about relationships serious, yeah, is that there's not a shortage of joy and happiness, contentment and meaning in their life. They really are, as Jesus says, being sustained. They are eating the the bread that comes from doing the will of God. Mm-hmm. This is the kind of bread that never ever runs out. Right. Come on, that's good. I mean, it's yeah. a powerful, yeah. powerful thing to have examples of that stood up around us. So I commend you for that, sister. Thank you. I for appreciate sure. that. For sure. Thank you so Before much. Before we get out of here, please talk to us about the music, okay? Because yeah. we want this also to be a moment to introduce you to our audience and yeah. uh, and for them to get to know your, your, uh, your sound, your yeah. heart, your passion. Take us into that, and, and yeah. then we'll, we'll wrap up. Yeah, so the music has been so fun. I'm actually, uh, at this event that we're at, going to be debuting two kind of more hip-hop songs, boop, which boop, I'm boop, 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 so boop. excited about. <laughs> the past year, I've probably done a little bit more pop and, and, and contemporary a little bit uh-huh. recently. Before, I was doing a lot more pop, hip-hop, and then kind of shifted just a little bit. Um, but now, I'm my space is pop and hip-hop, and yeah. so I love mm-hmm. that. And so the two songs I'm debuting for this uh, will be like that. And, and I love doing that because I love to dance, so I incorporate a lot of dancing into my performances. Yeah. So it's nice. It's going to be so fire. Yeah. I'm so excited. Um, so, yeah. So, I've had tons of singles that have released this year, though. Um, a recent music video. Hardest just... working woman in Christian hip-hop. Oh, <laughs> Talk to her nice. <laughs> oh, there's so many others that are doing so many great things. Well, I appreciate that. And um, one of, I just released a brand new music video for a single called Deserve Your Love. This is probably one of the most... Um, kind of more contemporary, almost a little bit, and I wouldn't say worship, but a little bit slower, but so heartfelt. Um, and it was a beautiful song. I was able to work with a great songwriter on it. And it's anyone that has heard the song. It's just one of those songs that like you really relate to of mm-hmm. when you're in those moments of your life, when you feel like you don't deserve God's love and just mm-hmm. the chaos of life is going on, how still those are the moments when God reaches in and yeah. he extends mm-hmm. his love. And so we did a beautiful music video to it and it came together so nice. So that's out now on YouTube for people to check out. Very nice, a blessing. But a lot more music for hip-hop and pop is coming. And then tons of other singles I've done, to name a few, like Telling Everybody. What about telling about, you know, the gospel of Jesus Christ? Song called No More Lies that talks about not listening to the lies of the enemy and how Mm -hmm. our confidence comes from the Lord. That's one of the songs that I actually... um, wrote a book too. It's called No More Lies and it's mm-hmm. about finding your identity in Christ. And oh. so I did a book on that um, and uh, some other songs. And so all the songs are available online. Uh, some of the songs have a book that go with it. Um, you can find the books on like Amazon or on uh, my merch site called the dwellshop.com. And the dwellshop.com is called Dwell because one of my foundational messages was called Dwell. And that was my mm-hmm. first book that I ever wrote about my story, about my life. And I took it from the scripture, Psalms 27, 4. 
4 where it says to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That's the one thing that I desire. Amen, and so amen. so that's the foundation. So you can check out all those things. And then, you know, if I can just plug the social media, I mean, Official Maddie Ray on the Instagram official and YouTube, Official Maddie Ray, and all those things. So you can find it anywhere. And I pray that if you come across it, that it blesses you. Yes. Oh, Thank you, like you said, and as you were talking about, showing everyone that, number one, holiness is not some foreign kind of ideal that's in the clouds. Right. It is possible. Right, right, right. It is possible. Holiness is possible. Purity is possible. Jesus doesn't just talk about it as a ideal, but as a reality. Mm. And, yeah. and, I, and I'm so glad that you are bringing that to bear on, for everyone else and be an example of that. And please, 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 all of you, check out her music. Check out the books. Go and check out the music videos. Instagram. You're on Twitter. Are you on Twitter? Uh, not actively. Okay, well, yeah. good. Good. Because a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all need to stay on Twitter anyway. Because it's just a slow. war zone. The young folks don't, lo- don't so, use Twitter though. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. TikTok, they, TikTok is our Twitter. <laughs> TikTok. So no, check it out and thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much. So much. It was for such an honor. Through. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Indeed. Yes, yes. This has been Southside Rabbi. I am KB. I'm Amina Dream. Check Peace. Y'all later. Peace.